What is ballistic coefficient? It's not the easiest of answers, and it actually involves some really geeky science and equations, but I'll do my best to explain it. Ballistic coefficient simply defined is the measure of a bullet's ability to slice through the atmosphere. Uh, now, while that sounds relatively easy, there's a lot that goes into the physical and actual determination of ballistic coefficient, but the more we can understand, the better we can choose our ammunition and get our objective done, whether it's to hit the target at a thousand yards or to kill that deer at 350 across the bean field. There are two models against which all of our bullets are compared, the G1 model and the G7 model. Now, these are just arbitrary designs with which we can reference our particular bullet. Now, uh, the G1 model is a flat-based Spitzer bullet, uh, much like this Nosler partition I've got right here. Uh, as you can see, it's a Spitzer point, but with a flat base. While the G7 model is a Spitzer bullet with a severe boat tail, much like this Hornady SST. It results in a unitless number, usually represented by a decimal less than one, although in extreme cases like the 50 BMG or those really, really long bullets, you can approach 1.0. What it means is the higher that unitless number, the better your bullet will resist wind deflection, will resist atmospheric drag. So, if you're looking to shoot real long range, and we're talking about, you know, the 1,000 to 15 to 2,000 yard guys, uh, you definitely need a bullet with a really high BC, uh, because it's going to slice through the atmosphere a little bit easy, uh, than, easier than a round nose bullet, let's say. It will, it will resist slowing down, and it will also resist the effects of wind deflection. Now, the longer a bullet, generally speaking, in the same conformation, the better its ballistic coefficient. I have here in my hands two little bullets you can see. One is a flat base 55 grain 224. The other is a 68 grain Hornady match in 224. And if you compare the two, you can easily see one's much longer, one's got a little bit of a more sleek ogive, and that boat tail on the 68 grain bullet makes a huge difference. The same can be said for these two 180 grain 30 caliber bullets. You can see that the ogive on the SST is a little more sleek than is the Nosler partition. Uh, it's also got that boat tail. Uh, and for an extreme example here, I've got two 375 caliber bullets, both at 300 grains. One is a 300 grain flat base round nose, while the other is a 300 grain Sierra Game King boat tail. Uh, compare the two and you can easily see this much more looks like a box truck while this looks like a Ferrari. What does it do for us? If your hunting distances are within 200 yards, the time of flight of your bullet is generally speaking so short that you won't see much of a difference. When you get out past 200 to say 300, 350, 400 and certainly anything past 5, that boat tail bullet is going to have a huge, huge impact. The higher the BC of the bullet, the flatter your trajectory, uh, comparing the same weight bullets, of course. The higher your BC, the less wind deflection you have and the less you, know, you have to compensate for it. And this is a huge factor in why the 6.5 cartridges are so hot today. Uh, 6.5 Creedmoor, 6.5 Grendel even. Uh, I'm a fan of the 6.5 284. But the 260 Remington, the old 264 Wind Mag, the 65 300 Weatherby, they all have a stellar reputation for being great long range cartridges. You may be saying to yourself, why? What, what, what's the advantage? It's all in the ballistic coefficient of those 6.5 millimeter bullets. They have a twist rate that can stabilize those long 140, 143, sometimes even 160 grain bullets. Uh, and what that does, it allows them to retain all their energy or at least a, a great fraction of it downrange, and it gives them wind deflection values that are superior to other cartridges. Uh, to obtain the same characteristics as a 140 grain 6.5 millimeter bullet, you pretty much have to go to like a 210 grain 30 caliber. And in that, the, the recoil ramps up, you know, it's not friendly to shoot all day long. Uh, so, so for these guys shooting the real long range stuff, in a 6.5 caliber cartridge, you've really got a, a winner for that, you know, long range game in that the trajectory doesn't get, you know, to severely rainbowed or the, the wind deflection values are literally cut in half sometimes. So, look at your own shooting conditions. If, if you're a deer hunter like me here in the Northeast, where most of our shots are less than 125 yards, 
you know, these round nose bullets, they, they don't handicap me at all. And they probably have a little bit better energy transfer. They keep a lot of their weight out of the cartridge case mouth, uh, you know, so, you know, the, the case capacity isn't, isn't in any way impinged. Uh, they've worked for over a hundred years and I don't think they'll ever stop working. Uh, in that same 375, where I hunting kudu, where I could anticipate a shot at maybe three, 350 yards, I would definitely switch to this bullet. It makes uh, hitting that target much more easy, and uh, it, it usually results in much less calculation in the field. I don't have to worry about two feet of holdover. I only have to worry about uh, 10 inches of holdover at those distances. So I, I hope that explained BC, and as you're shopping for ammunition, Make sure you try to match the bullet's confirmation to your particular shooting environment.